Hey there, Leifi here, and today we will look at the most versatile weapon in the game. A lot of new players don't know what weapon to pick in Albion Online, and they want something that can do about anything in the game, whilst also being verifiable in the different types of content. Now this video is all about that one specific weapon, which almost sounds too good to be true. But once you have watched this video entirely, I'm very sure you will be convinced and know what weapon to play if you are still looking for one. Before we go any further, most of you haven't subscribed yet, and it would really support me a lot if you did. So please consider subscribing if you like the videos I upload. And if you want to feel really cool whilst doing that, give the bell a tip as well. The weapon in question is the Blood Leather, which is one of the 7 daggers. I would go as far as saying that this weapon is the best option for overall gameplay, whether we are talking about PvE or PvP content. It's also one of the few weapons that can hold its ground in an outnumbered fight, or even in a one versus many scenario, which is something I think is appealing to a lot of players. Who wouldn't want to win a one versus 2 or one versus 3 I can tell you from personal experience, I've done that plenty of times, and most of the times it has been on the blood ladder. Whether you are a solo player or someone that likes to play in groups, I'm very convinced this weapon is the one weapon you will want to level up and will benefit from the most. Historically, the blood ladder has always been a very scary weapon, due to the execute potential it has. But it's not that potential alone, it's also the insane mobility and utility this weapon has, despite being a melee weapon, which has increased over time with changes to the dagger weapon tree. This makes the blood ladder good for other activities aside from PvE and PvP, such as gathering and transporting as well. Blood leather also happens to be a one-handed weapon, meaning you can wield an offhand with it. This just adds a lot to the versatility of this weapon, which you will understand in just a bit. Combine everything about the blood leather I've mentioned so far, with the freedom in the different armors you can equip in Albion Online, and you pretty much have a weapon that can be used by anyone for anything in the game. To understand my claims in detail, we first have to realize that this is a dagger weapon, meaning it has access to a lot of utility and high damage skills. Daggers are typically like that in any MMORPG, where the playstyles are often assassin-like. As a dagger player in your standard MMO, your goal is to use your damage buffs and utility skills, such as invisibilities, to sneak up on one of your targets and take them down with high damage single target burst skills. And the dagger weapon tree in Albion Online for the majority of the daggers is the very same. 5 out of 7 daggers indeed have high damage single target skills that are really good in 1 versus 1 matchups. Then comes the two exceptions, one being the newly added Avalonian dagger called Bridled Furry, which is a skill that makes you leap backwards as you do AoE damage to the targets on your initial location. The other exception has been the sole exception amongst the daggers for a very long time, which is the Blood Ladder. The Blood Ladder is capable of dashing to a location whilst doing damage to everyone in its path, with many perks to this skill. So let's go over these perks and understand what makes the Blood Ladder not only the exception amongst the daggers, but also separates the weapon from all the other weapons in the game and makes it the one weapon that brings the most to the table. As said prior, the special ability of the Blood Ladder makes you dash in whatever direction you want, whilst also doing damage to anyone hit during the dash. This skill is called Lunging Stabs. This alone is a really nice perk because mobility in this form can be used both offensive and defensive. So if your target is escaping from you, you can use this ability as a gap closer, and if you need to escape yourself, you can use it to increase the gap. The fact it's AoE naturally adds to the effectiveness as well. The next perk is that the damage you do with this skill is based on the health of your enemy. If they have about 40% health, you don't do that much damage, but it can still be beneficial to use it in an offensive way to keep the pressure up. When their health is under 40% however, the damage increases enormously, pretty much making this skill a full on execute. The Bridled Furry, which is the only other AoE dagger, does damage based on the amount of stacks you have, which isn't applicable to the Blood Ladder since it works with percentage health, giving you much more freedom in how and when you use this ability. I always say the Blood Ladder is not a fair weapon to fight against, because you are at a 40% health disadvantage the moment you face one. This might almost sound too good to be true, but the blood ladder exists. If I made the blood ladder sound OP already, put your gamer chair seatbelts on and embrace, 
because this skill has one more perk. The final perk is that if you hit at least one enemy player with the skill that has below 40% health, it shortens all your ability cooldowns by 10 seconds. Now isn't that just OPAF? And yes, we are still talking about only one very specific skill, the Lunging Stabs, which is the special ability of the Blood Leather. Add everything else the Dagger Weapon Tree has to offer to the Blood Leather, and you are looking at the most versatile weapon in the game. So what is the everything else the Dagger Weapon Tree has to offer, and how does it complement the Blood Leather? Let's go over it. In general, you want to use the Deadly Swipe for your first skill because it increases the mobility you have by giving you a little jump on a few seconds cooldown, whilst also doing AoE damage and giving you a damage buff. This skill as well can be used both offensive and defensive, and is a great tool to dodge skulls with, keep the pressure up on your enemy, and close or increase the gap based on what you need, all the while whilst doing damage and getting a damage buff if you hit your targets. For your second skill, the majority of the time, you will want to use Chain Slash. The Chain Slash just does a ton of damage to multiple enemies, whilst also turning you invisible and invulnerable. This skill is even good when you are in a 1 vs 1, despite being AoE, simply because it has so much damage and utility to it. Each one of these three abilities is an S tier ability on its own. All of them do AoE damage, provide a form of mobility and utility in one way or another, and provide a lot of freedom in how you can use them. I honestly can't think of any other weapon that has such synergy between the three skills. Add the deep cuts passive to this, and you also have a bleed that does a noticeable amount of damage every 4 auto attacks to a single target, which hastens the execute potential of the blood ladder even more, making for even more synergy and with that explains why the blood ladder on its own is such a powerful weapon. But the blood ladder is only half the fun on its own. Remember I said the blood ladder is a one handed weapon? This means you can wield an offhand with it and increase whatever feature you want and alter your gameplay with the blood ladder altogether. You can become more tanky by taking a defensive offhand such as the taproot or one of the shields. The facebreaker is a pretty popular one for the blood ladder since it also provides offensive stats aside from defensive ones. Want to use your abilities more often? Take the mist color or even better the torch so that you also gain attack speed aside from the cooldown reduction. Or maybe you want to be more on the offense. In that case the Crypt Candle and the Musak will provide that for you at the cost of your sustain or defenses. The fact the Blood Leather is one handed and has the room for an offhand adds a lot to the versatility of this weapon. Normally we rely on the armor parts to change the use of a weapon in the slightest way possible, but with the Blood Leather it already starts at the offhand. This makes for many different playstyles, which is a luxury that's pretty rare for a weapon to have in Albion Online. Now this information might feel overwhelming, but I hope you now understand why the Blood Leather is the most versatile weapon in the game. It's a weapon that can be used by anyone at any stage for whatever purpose. And to back the statement up even further, let me help you with some build ideas for the Blood Leather. The broad use of the Blood Leather and the different ways you can play it, starting with the offhand, also extends to the armor pieces in that there are many different ways you can mix and match your armors and create a viable build for the blood leather. When you go for a taproot, you can combine it with plate armors to have a lot of defenses and sustain, whilst when you go for a torch, you can combine it with leather armors to have more utility and use your abilities more often. You can also play it as a glass cannon by going with the crypt candle and combining it with cloth armors and quickly burst your targets down. I would like to show you my personal favorite build for the blood leather, which I feel is a very balanced one, that covers everything you need in a build and can be used for a big variety of content. This blood leather build is something I like to use whenever roaming in the open world or on the roads of Avalon, whether I'm playing solo or in a group. It's pretty much an all purpose kind of build with which you can do about anything. In this build the Scholar Cal provides energy sustain and gives you extra defenses, which is always nice to have as a melee DPS. The Helion Jacket provides health sustain, so together with the Scholar Cal I've got both sustains covered. These are health and energy. Of course the Helion Jacket also does damage whilst healing you and extra damage is always nice to have, especially when it's AoE like the Helion Jacket. Any leather boots for the refreshing sprint which just really helps with cooldowns. I like to take Hunter Shoes simply for the fact sometimes it also pays off to use the Rush ability which helps with catching up such as when I try to dismount people. For the cape the Tedford cape since I don't need any extra sustain as I have that fully covered already. 
and the AoE damage of the Tethered Cape I find really beneficial in both PvE and PvP. For my offhand, I recently picked up the Torch, which I'm seeing huge value in, both from cooldowns and the attack speed, which provides a big boost to DPS because of the Deep Cuts passive, which I apply much quicker and more often. Having lower cooldowns is always a nice thing to have and affects your damage over time as well. Previously, I love taking the Face Breaker with this build, but I feel like the Torch provides much more overall value. Heals 2 for even faster cooldowns and more damage, and resistance potions are the typical go to's for open world PvP. This is a really great build for fights where you are outnumbered. I've had a lot of fights in which I was 1 against 2 or 1 against 3 with this build, and won the fights simply because this build covers all the grounds you need to win such fights in Albion Online. You've got energy sustain, health sustain, a lot of AoE damage, a lot of single target damage, defense buffs, invulnerability skills to dodge with, execute potential, and even a fair chance of escaping since you are playing the blood leather. One thing you could do is swap out the hunter shoes for the demon boots to increase your chances of escaping even more, but I would only do that when you are playing solo. Whenever you are playing with others, the demon boots aren't a good option any longer. And this build is not only good for PvP, but it's also fine to do solo PvE content with, such as the solo chests on the roads of Avalon or solo dungeons. Since there is a PvP risk to these types of content, which starts the moment you head out to do them, you want to have a build that can hold its ground whenever you are walked up on by multiple players. And from my personal experience, this Blood Leather build is a really good answer to that. One place this build falls short is Corrupted Dungeons, where you want to have a more specialized or meta 1 vs 1 build. The best way to go about this is to look at the highest infamy rankings of this week or last week and see what kind of blood leather builds the top players are playing right now. You will see that currently the plate blood leather build is very popular, which is completely different from the build I just covered. Which just really proves that the blood leather has a huge variety in how it can be played. Starting from my favorite build, as a base there are many changes you can do to it to change up the playstyle. You could swap out the scholar cowl for a specter hood and have double helium jacket this way, which means you will have a lot more sustain. Add the Mark Lock Cape and Face Breaker to this, and now you also have a boost in your defenses to increase the effectiveness of that sustain even more. But this change also means you will lose your energy source since the Scholar Cowl was taking care of this. So to make up for that loss, you could change your Hunter Shoes to Scholar Sandals and regain your energy sustain. Now I do realize this requires quite some item swaps, but it still covers all the things you need in the build for it to be viable and sustainable. I started from my build as a base so that you understand what the changes exactly do and how you can make sure you don't miss out on anything. Let's do that once again but head a more aggressive direction this time. Starting from my build again, what we can do is change the armor to Spectre Jacket. This will improve the AoE damage you do by a lot in trade for your sustain. Swap your offhand to a mist color for lower cooldowns and you pretty much have a build that's awesome to clear solo dungeons with. To make up for the loss in health sustain, you simply use food with sustain instead. Now this is a more PvE focused build, meaning it will leave you more vulnerable in PvP. But I wanted to show you that even with the slightest swaps, you can make this build viable for different content very easily. Now it's not a requirement to always have health sustain or energy sustain in your build. And this is something that really reflects in something like the Cleric Rope build for the Blood Leather, which is about taking someone down really quick and getting out of there. A completely different playstyle altogether for the Blood Leather that's just as viable as any of the other builds, confirming even more how fair style the Blood Leather is. And that's what makes the Blood Leather such a great weapon, one I would recommend for any player to pick up if you are unsure of what weapon to play, or if you just want to have a build that can hold its ground in the most difficult situations. Just remember what your build is meant for and play it accordingly, and you will be fine with the Blood Leather. This video was all about showing how versatile the blood leather can be, and I hope you feel the information I provided did it justice. It's simplifiable for all sorts of content from solo dungeons to solo PvP and group dungeons to group PvP, all the way to the biggest ZVZ fights in Elmin Online. With all of that, I would like to conclude my statement that the blood leather is the most versatile weapon in the game and the weapon you will have a lot of fun with. Like, comment, subscribe. Tap that notification bell and I'll see you next time. Won't you come over? Dying to know where you came from. We're breaking open. 
feel like our future's just begun. <laughs>